is NATO going to be why we avoid World War III? Are they going to send troops in? That's what the video will be about. So I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Yeah, I guess some people think that the only way to stop this is for nature to go in and, and, and blast the heck out of... Uh, um, that Russian aggression. So um, let's see what the cards have to say. I really don't have an opinion on this and uh, let's uh, see how that turns out. So we want to know, will NATO send in troops to avoid World War III? It's very specific, that question. So will NATO send in troops uh, in an effort to avoid World War III? I love these cards. I don't like the way they, you have to get them out of the box. That's a bit of a problem. And I'm going to try to leave this here. We'll see how that works. Will NATO send in troops to avoid World War III? Will NATO send in troops to avoid World War III? Will NATO send in troops to avoid World War III? Will NATO send in troops to avoid World War III? And I'll tell you what's going through my head, as a matter of fact. I just am thinking that um, uh, maybe the thing to do would be to, for NATO to really rally up all their troops as a show of strength around Russia to say, look what's going to happen. Just like Russia did to um, Ukraine, they sent their troops all around the border to kind of say, we're coming. So let's meditate for just a moment on that. Okay, will NATO send in troops uh, to avoid World War III? That's interesting. Will NATO send in troops to avoid World War III? I mean, if they send in troops, we kind of think it would be in response to some sort of an aggressive action, but would they send in the troops to avoid World War III? Interesting. So let's get six cards. One, two, three, Four, five, and then six. Will NATO send in troops to avoid World War Three? Okay, signifier. Well, this is the Princess of Wands. Now, the Princess of Wands is a weak offering of a plan. Okay, so that's the signifier. A weak offering of a plan. The challenge to that. With this Eight of Wands, a lot of things coming at the same time. But I'm going to tell you something. Look at this. There's one wand that has been thrown. And then there's seven wands that are standing waiting in the back. It makes me think of two things. It makes me think of uh, Russia sending out a, a, some sort of a nuclear strike, a smallish uh, situation. Or NATO sending forth some sort of a, a precursor to what they might uh, bring and what they have at the ready. So either of those things could be signified here. We'll just have to see how this uh, plays out. The uh, base of this whole thing, oh, of course it is, is a tower moment. So the base of all of this is some sort of destruction. This is what would trigger uh, that question that we have. The past of this is going to be the Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords is really not wanting to make a move forward. These are swords of truth, justice, rules, and law, and really wanting to contemplate before you move forward, okay? Because it could be dangerous for you to move forward. You might get stuck if you're not careful. But that's in the past for this question. Not in the past right now, I think. In the past for when this might happen in the future. Uh, in the sky of this reading is the Wheel of Fortune. It's a crapshoot, okay? It really is. But I like to think that the Wheel of Fortune is moving in a positive direction. There are danger, uh, perilous parts on that wheel. But I want you to notice that this uh, circle, how do you consider, it looks like it's been drawn 
to completion at this point. It's not being traced for the first time over here. This has been traced. She's come around and she's stopped. She's been here. So she's come through the peril and she's on the way back up towards uh, good times. Okay. Because the peril is always right in here. That's in the sky. Okay. And then the likely outcome as to whether NATO would send in troops to avoid World War III is the fool uh, having the faith to step off that cliff, to move forward. Um, it's kind of how I like to think of this card, although it could me be uh, making a foolish move. But we'll see that this fool has, doesn't have his other foot forward, although he's getting ready for that swing. And his, this uh, judgment here this, um, is, is warning him. Interesting. Four more cards. Will NATO send troops to avoid World War Three? The self of that question is this Prince of Pentacles. Again, it's a weak offer. It's like a knight. So it's like a fighter of value. So this is NATO. This is the value that that would have. Okay. This is that uh, would fight to maintain that value. But it's a prince. It's not a queen. It's not a king. It's a fighter. The environment that it's in uh, with this King of Pentacles, okay, is is that they can move up to full force. Interesting. So this knight is in the environment or the knowledge of that king. The hopes and the fears for all of this is this King of Swords, truth, justice, rules, law, getting ready to wield that sword of truth, justice, rules, and law. Okay. Final outcome for that question, would NATO uh, make a strike to avoid World War III? And it's the Ten of Pentacles, happy family. Happy family. Is this the family of NATO, or is this a happy outcome? Uh, the consideration for all of that would be the consideration of the collective. So let's go over it one more time. Would NATO, um, what was exactly the question? Would, uh, would NATO send troops in to avoid World War III? Well, uh, the Princess of Wands, that's a weak plan. Okay, and it's challenged by what? This Eight of Wands, just the first kind of strike. Interesting. Is it the first strike that Russia made that, that tempts them to NATO to make a move? Or is NATO saying, look, this is what we might do. Look at what we've got behind us if we go further. I tend to think that's it. And the base of it is this Tower moment. Is uh, some... Uh, calamitous situation would be the impetus for that and that we are it is the basis of this whole thing uh the past this with this four swords is knowing when to rest and really consider before you make a move and in the sky of this is uh, the wheel of fortune which is uh really um uh, it seems like the situation is going to be an, an improving uh arc okay uh, and the likely outcome is that fool taking a walk off that cliff. And I think that's what NATO doesn't want to do. The um, uh, self of that very question is this Prince of Pentacles. So this is the fighter of uh, value, which is NATO. And it's uh, in the environment of this King of Pentacles, which is the uh, th what this can escalate to. This knight is coming forward saying, hey, I'm going to fight for this. And the king is saying, I'm backing up that knight. And then the hopes, the fears for that is this king of swords, which is the truth, justice, rules, and law, which will govern everything. And the likely outcome of the whole thing with this ten of pentacles is happy family. So this tells me that um, it looks like some sort of a threat may need to be made by NATO to bring everything, to, to recognize their strength and their value and, and come to a conclusion of a happy family. That's how it seems to me. Let's just hope it doesn't come to global engagement in war because I think the only person that'll be on Russia's side is Russia. Hey, I'm gonna show you the cards now. So this is the Druid Craft Tarot and uh, it's sort of uh, on the magic of uh, Wicca and uh, Druidity or Druidry. Maybe that's the uh, per correct uh, uh, terminology. Uh, Philip and Stephanie Carr Gom uh, with illustrations by Will Worthington. Really nice deck. Um, they're a little, um, the car, the box is fantastic because you really feel like you got a nice quality uh, gift if you gave that. The guidebook is huge. And uh, the only thing I would say is that it's a shame it's not in full color, but it gives you some, some useful uh, divination uh, for the cards in there. So I like that. The cards themselves, the one uh, 
gripe I have is that you have to dump them out of the box, which I'm not that happy about. But uh, the cards themselves, they're huge, so some people might find them a little awkward to use, but I like them. And uh, the divination that you get out of them is amazing. There's so much thought that went into each picture, every element of each picture. And um, so they're very useful in almost any uh, circumstance where you're going to use these. And I like to spread them out like this. Uh, if I'm doing a reading with someone, then I like to usually let them uh, spread them out like this to kind of get their energy into the cards. It's a good way to mix them up without you know, damaging the cards too much, uh, which is uh, always important to me. So, these cards are fantastic. Druidcraft Tarot. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.